Our current healthcare model is broken, expensive, and is not changing the health of our society. Patients are suffering from chronic disease and body degeneration without options to escape. They are hopeless and broken. Welcome to Health Ovate with Dr. B. If you're ready to see how you can change your health for the better, you're ready to Health Ovate with Dr. B. Hello, I'm Dr. Joel Baumgartner, but you can just call me Dr. B. Welcome to the show. I am super excited about this segment today. We're going to be diving into some deep issues on nutrition, but also on weight loss. You know, that's something that has plagued all of us for so long. I've talked to so many patients and clients who are struggling. They're feeling defeated. They're feeling broken down. They come in to see their doctor and they haven't lost their weight. We're going to show you some secrets today that might help you break those plateaus. But even more importantly than that is this whole new global concept of changing healthcare. We're talking a lot about that, is, is redefining healthcare. My personal mission in life is to redefine healthcare and to create health that is available to all people to actually make them healthier. Again, today is that foundation, which is the nutrition and weight loss, and that is a health ovation. It's combining innovative new treatments with healthcare. So today, we're all gonna come together. We're all health ovators. We're gonna health ovate. Thank you. Today, we're gonna to talk about nutrition and weight loss. It truly is the foundation to all healing. Your ability to create lasting change in your habits starts not in your mouth, but actually in your head. It's all about mindset. You need to make your decision to become healthy based on a deep-rooted reason that is special to you. It's called your why. Like, I want to be healthy for my children, or I want to play with my grandchildren and live a fit, active retirement. What we're finding is that those that have the nutrition dialed in before the procedure actually have the best outcomes. They're getting off their prescription medications and reversing chronic disease all at the same time. You know what, the only way to reform healthcare is to make healthy people. So let's look at nutrition and weight loss. It's the foundation of it all. So what's broken about the current system with weight loss and nutrition? There are many diet plans out there, nutrition plans out there, yet as a nation, our obesity and chronic disease rates are on the rise. Yeah, so is our health insurance premiums, our medication prescriptions, and our rates of heart attacks, stroke, and hospitalizations. So the question is, how do we fix it? Nutrition is the cornerstone to reversing all chronic disease, and today we'll uncover some truths and dispel some myths about getting our bodies back to a healthy state. Now, new evidence is showing that decreasing your carbohydrate intake and affording inflammatory fats like vegetable oils and increasing your good fats like olive oils and even adding intermittent fasting can help you break that weight loss plateau and decrease your risk of chronic disease. So the secret's out. It all rebounds around a hormone called insulin. You need to make every effort to decrease your insulin levels so you can stop your storage of fat. I would like to welcome our special guests today. They have both embarked on a journey to health, have now made it a part of who they are on the inside and the outside. Let's welcome Sean and Twyla. Thank you for being here. Sean, I'd like to start with you. Um, this has been an amazing journey. And um, at its highest weight, you weighed how many pounds? 276 pounds. 276 pounds and then he entered a transformation challenge and I tell you what he's never looked back so congratulations Thank you. he has a really a lot to be proud of and uh, he's really changed the course of his life and his health I tell you what he's probably avoided future heart attacks and strokes through the changes he's made but he's a real person he's trying to be healthy for himself but also for his family and it is tough but I tell you what he is succeeding he looks great you've done amazing First thing I want to know is, tell us about your journey and, and why you decided to change your life. Oh, this journey's been crazy from the beginning. Uh, after going to the emergency room and seeing that number on the scale when I stepped on it, I knew something had to be, I had to change something. Otherwise, I'd probably wind up having a heart attack or a stroke. Right. Uh, so I went and looked up, looking at different programs and I was looking at my Facebook account one day, and all of a sudden something from Rejuve uh, showed up on my Facebook account, and I was looking at it, I'm like, going, yeah, I like what I saw. I, I, everything they offered was different than what the other gyms offered, especially the personal attention and uh, wanting to make sure you got there. 
with accountability coaches and stuff to help out. Yeah. Make, try to keep you motivated. Uh, and starting, starting was crazy. Yeah. Especially that first boot camp I did. Oh, <laughs> I was so intimidated. Yeah. I was like the fattest guy in a group of like 20 some people. And I didn't know halfway through that boot camp if I was going to stick it out or not. Yeah. You know, but you I did. did it. Otherwise, I would not have completed if I would not have stuck through it. I want you to rewind. Rewind a year ago when you were at work or in your life. What was it like to be the old you? How did that feel? It felt horrible. Yeah. I was always, you know, getting sick left and right, uh, being, you know, kind of bullied or harassed by coworkers for being big. And I'll tell you what, you were powerful and strong the way you were a year ago, and you're even more powerful and strong today because of the influence that you're going to have on a ton of people. Tell me what your goal is with this transformation because you are making some decisions to change your life, and what is your long-term goal with this? Um, well, my long-term goal is what, once, I, I call this my reset. <laughs> yeah. It's like a factory reset, going back to a, you know, a healthy weight, and then, then I'm going to add more muscle to my body to try to make it look a little better. <laughs> I thought about becoming a personal trainer to help other people along their you know, journey to get healthy, uh, but then I decided I'm going to go back uh, and become an EMT again. Since I got back into shape, I'm definitely strong enough to haul some of those people out of their homes or situations to get them out. That's amazing. It's the new you. You you look great. Be proud. Be strong of who you are. But what I love too is that mindset that I'm going to go do things that I've always wanted to do. I'm going to go back to the old powerful strong guy I was before. And it's it's super awesome. Thanks for sharing with us. And I want to welcome Twyla. You know, Twyla is not only a success story, but she's also she's a health coach and she has gone through this herself, and she's made a wonderful transformation. I want to ask you your first question, Twyla, is why did you decide to do this journey? What made you want to do this? I have daughters, gorgeous daughters, and now yeah. I have granddaughters. And I want to be a good example for what one can do to actually transform their lives. They've been a part of my path from the days they've been born. Yeah. They've been with me through the journey of all the sicknesses, all the illnesses. They were there to lift me when um, I couldn't lift myself. Um, which is tough as a mother when you're trying to make sure that you are doing the right thing by them. Um, you never want them to see you not be 100%. Yeah. Tell me about the Twyla from the past and where you were, and tell me about the Twyla of today, and how are you different? So for me in the past, um, I had to do a lot of faking in life because I was diagnosed with a lot of different things. I had my gallbladder taken out, my appendix taken out. I was then told that I would need part of my colon removed, and I'm like, dude, that's not going to happen. <laughs> um, then I was diagnosed with uh, anemia, Hashimoto's, wow. and then ultimately um, um, celiac disease. And through that journey, um, I faked it a lot that I was okay and that everything was good. When I'd go home at night, I'd lay in my bed and cry endlessly because I wasn't able to get up yeah. and do many things that I wanted to do for my children um, or myself. Um, in the end, I just decided to make the change and I wasn't going to be bullied by the medical establishment yeah. anymore. I really like that. It sounds like your why was for your family. 100%. You wanted to make a change so you could be the person leading this, this tribe of people in a very healthy way. Mm -hmm. Tell me some of the things that you've done, because we all hit these roadblocks. We're like, man, I've been trying to do something for three weeks and the scale's not changing. What have you found that's been successful for you in breaking those scale barriers that you've hit? So for me, um, luckily I get to work with an amazing tribe of practitioners and so I get to go to people like Dr. Baumgartner and get my hormones tested. Uh, micronutrients, which are very important to know what's actually missing within our own personal bodies. Um, and learning how to manage stress. So if anybody knows me, I'm a little type A, so yeah. you know, I got to learn a lot about the meditations and the calming things. Stress is super important. Yeah. Um, you've told me a little bit about your journey with uh, a lower carb diet and even trying intermittent fasting. Has that been helpful for you? That is the thing that turned everything around. So about six months ago, I just fell full of tilt into uh, a modified keto diet with intermittent fasting and dropped 26 pounds like that. And it was like, blows me away. That's a good segue because we're going to get into that a little bit. You know, what is intermittent fasting? What is a, a low carb or a ketogenic style of nutrition? 
And to talk about that, we have to really know a little bit more about the secret little hormone is insulin. We have to know about insulin and why is it not allowing us to lose our weight. So to talk about insulin, insulin is a storage hormone. So that means that when the insulin goes up, if there's any kind of an energy out there, whether it's fat, protein, or carbohydrate, it's going to try to store it. So for example, so say for breakfast I had pancakes, a little bit of syrup, and yeah, some eggs, and I washed it down with some orange juice. And then I go out for lunch and I have even a healthy chicken sandwich with bun and a fry, and I'm like, oh, I think I'll take that Sprite, wash it down. I've already consumed over 200 grams of carbohydrates that day, which for anybody that's trying to lose weight or even maintain weight, I, I guarantee you, you're not going to maintain weight on that, that carbohydrate load. Because what happens is when the body's constantly getting bombarded by a carbohydrate, the body is going to then jump the insulin up, and the insulin has to push all that energy into cells. What happens is the body can only store about 500 grams of energy in our muscles and our liver. So if all that carb is out there, it can't be pushed into the muscle anymore. It gets pushed into our fat. It gets converted into fat. So what happens then is we start gaining weight. So as long as the insulin is high, you're always going to be storing fat. So the key here is we need to decrease our insulin. The other thing that happens, if your body's constantly bombarded by insulin, the body kind of gets resistant to it. And it's like, eh, I don't even see you anymore. So what we need to do, the secret to losing the weight and getting our bodies to tap into fat stores is we have to decrease insulin. The only way to do that is to decrease insulin's bad buddy, who is sugar. The second thing you want to do is you want to decrease your inflammatory fats. So when it comes to fats, there are good fats and there's bad fats. The good fats, those are anti-inflammatory, like omega-3 fats, like fish oil, avocado oil, or even coconut oil cooking in is great. The fats you want to stay away from are your trans fats, your saturated fats. And one other one that we all get way too much of, vegetable oil. We're finding that vegetable oil has a lot of trans fats in it. It's an omega-6 fat. It's super inflammatory. You're not going to lose weight on, omega, on, on vegetable oils. And it can actually make more inflammation, heart disease, and chronic disease as well in your body. So I just want to say thank you guys so much for being here today. It was my honor to have you, and I'm actually inspired by what you've done. We're going to continue on our health journey. When we come back, we're going to make the rounds. We're actually going to take some questions from you, the audience, and see what you have to say. Stay with us. I've come to Rejuve to do a non-surgical procedure to take stem cells out and throw that into my knee and hopefully get some cartilage to regrow in my knee. You can actually see it go into your knee and there's, there's a full, complete process that's happening and, and that was really easy. Uh, overall, it's been a good experience. Rejuve Medical has changed the face of healthcare. Through nutrition, fitness, functional, and regenerative medicine, we eliminate pain and stop chronic diseases in their tracks. More at rejuvemedical.com. Well, everybody, welcome back. And it's time to make the rounds. So this is the time for you to ask questions to me. What kind of questions do you guys have? When I cut out sugar, how do I get my body into a state of burning fat, but then still have energy to do my workouts? Yeah. How do I get my body to burn fat? We are talking about weight loss today, and it's so important to get your body into a fat-burning state. And as we've kind of alluded to before, if, you're, if your insulin is chronically high, you're chronically storing fat. So the only way to do that is to get rid of the bad boy, which is sugar. And what's hard though, is sometimes people try to do this too quickly. They try to go right from 150 to 200 grams of carbs a day, and they're gonna cut it down to 50. What happens then is you start bonking, you start craving, you get hangry. So what you need to do is slowly decrease your carbohydrate intake. And while you're doing that, start increasing the, the good fats. They're gonna keep you full. People always think, you know, fats are bad. You know, in fact, if you go back to the old no fat craze, we were all squirting that fat-free stuff on all of our toast, and you're buying a lot of Twizzlers because there's no fat in there, and they even advertise fat-free sugar Twizzlers, right? So the problem with that is there are good and there are bad fats. Uh, some of the bad fats is really good to be uh, informed on would be like your trans fats. You know, there's a lot of trans fats sold in the United States. In certain countries like Germany, they don't even allow them to make foods with trans fats. But you go buy that Twinkie, you look at the ingredients, you're going to say hydrogenated oils. And those bad fats have been directly associated with chronic disease, like heart disease, a lot of inflammation. So you got to get rid of the trans fats and just read the labels. The next one is vegetable oils. It's hidden into everything and it has a nice name, right? It's a vegetable oil. It must be really good for me. That includes canola oil and all the other things as well, is you need to decrease or stop vegetable oils. And again, it's in everything. If you're going to fry something or if you're going to make some popcorn, do it with coconut oil. 
So we've talked a lot about decreasing the carbs and increasing the good fats. The good fats would be things like avocados, omega-3s, coconut oil. Omega-3s from a lot of varieties like seafood, coconut oil, or krill oil. All those are different types of omega-3s. Um, again, what you need to do is a stop and eliminate all the vegetable products. Um, switch to those healthy oils. And uh, even like coconut oil, super yummy. And it's going to keep you full, but you're not going to crave all those carbs you've been addicted to for so long. I lost some weight, um, but uh, I hit the plateau. What they can do to break it? Yeah, good question. It's a good time here to maybe talk about exercise versus nutrition and what do I dial in first. The, fa the first thing you need to do is you know, dial in your mindset, which you've already started losing weight but hitting a plateau, so you can't over-exercise weight loss. Because what happens is the more you exercise, the more you crave energy to refuel those things. So really dial in your nutrition first. And that would be the things we're talking about is lowering all the processed carbohydrates, lowering the grains. We can even talk now about the grains because we haven't dialed into the grains as much. And grains, you know, get the gold stars are super healthy. Get those whole grains. The problem is whole grains, if you look at the ingredients, it gets broken into a carbohydrate and it's going to spike your insulin. So a lot of people will break those plateaus by stopping the bread products, the cereals, all those different things that have the whole grains. Cut those back for a while. Eventually, once you're at your ideal body weight, go ahead and bring back in a piece of whole grain bread or you know, some whole grain crackers, but cut those out for a while. The second thing you might want to try to decrease a little bit is your fruit intake, because fruits are actually super high in um, fructose, which is a lipogenic type of an energy source. So maybe decrease the grains a little bit, decrease the sugars. That might help you break your plateau. I love my carbs, and I want to continue to lose weight, but I really have trouble cutting those carbs out. What can I do? Two things I'll give you is number one is to decrease the carb intake, you have to increase the good fats. We've said that before is get those good fats back and it's going to make you feel full longer. The other thing that sounds kind of crazy is eat less often. What? Want to be more hungry? No. The studies are showing that people that actually eat less often, for example, just two or three meals a day, as opposed in the past we'd always say you should have six meals a day, eat before bed, make sure you have breakfast in the morning, but then you're constantly having that yo-yo, carb, trough, carb, trough cycle. So eat less often. When you do eat, make sure you're fueling yourself with amazing foods that are high in nutrients, lots of vegetables, lots of good fats, lots of good healthy protein sources that your body won't be craving other lousy nutrition. I've been hearing more about intermittent fasting. Yeah. Uh, my question for you is, does that have any negative impact on metabolism and how does that work? So intermittent fasting is when you just don't eat for a period of time. For example, I'm fasting right now. I haven't eaten since yesterday. I'm drinking fluids, but I want my body to be using fat as its energy source. So intermittent fasting is a really great way to get your body to break down the fat stores because right now I don't have any carbohydrates, so it's used all my carbohydrates, so it's burning fat. When it burns fat, it creates an energy source called a ketone. So you've heard maybe about the ketogenic diet or I'm on keto. Everybody thinks it's cool to be on keto. But the problem with keto, is it's not necessarily a fad. In fact, keto's been done for hundreds of years. It's very successful. Being on keto means basically you're decreasing the fats to a point where, you know what, your body starts to burn, or you're decreasing the carbs, so your body starts to burn fats. Intermittent fasting can decrease your uh, uh, blood sugars and your insulin levels. You might need less of your, your uh, medications. So thank you guys so much. Those are some great rounds. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today's questions. But if you want more information, I encourage you to check out the website at joelbumgardnermd.com. When we come back, it's time for a gut check. We're going to do a little questionnaire that will help you determine where you are now and what your next steps are to a healthy, rejuvenated life. We'll be right back. If you suffer from chronic pain, Rejuve Medical is here to give you hope. I was unable to walk much more than a block and a half without very significant right knee pain. Now here I am six months later, uh, able to walk three miles, and I have full function of my knee, leading a very normal life. Rejuve Medical has changed the face of healthcare. Through nutrition, fitness, functional, and regenerative medicine, we eliminate pain and stop chronic diseases in their tracks. More at rejuvemedical.com. I want to welcome you guys back to Health Ovate. I'm Dr. B, and I want you to experience health care the way it should be. We've been talking about nutrition and weight loss, and it's your turn for that gut check. We put together a little questionnaire for the audience. We're also going to put the questions up for you at home to follow along. 
Let's take a look to see where you are. Okay, how did you do? Anybody answer yes to any of those questions? <laughs> yeah. So if you answered yes to any of all of those questions, the question I have for you is, who wants to start restoring your health today? All right, I put together uh, some action plans for you so we can all really start health evading. You've waited long enough, so how do you do it, right? Where do you start? You start with your mindset. The mindset is the most important thing to get dialed in, establishing your why, just like Twyla did. Once you know that, then you can do anything. The next thing is looking at those nutrition goals. We talked a lot about starting to lower your carb intake to the point where your body starts to burn fat as an energy source and increasing the good fats so your brain's not hungry all the time. So it's a great way to do that. Decrease the carbs, increase the good fats so you're not so hungry. Well, how low do I need to decrease my carbs? Well, it depends what you want out of this, right? Do you want to lose weight or do you want to maintain? If you want to maintain your weight, eat super healthy, clean foods, you might be able to have an occasional piece of you know, bread uh, or some pasta, but if you start gaining the weight, you gotta dial it down. What we're finding is from about 100 to 150 grams of carbohydrates a day, it's kind of that maintenance mode. If you go too far above that, that's that one pound a year, and at 60, you've gained 30 pounds since you're 30. So if you go to the, what we call foundational nutrition, you should expect to lose about a, one pound of uh, fat a week, and that is that 100 to 150 grams of carbs a day. You wanna go a little bit faster, you're gonna dial the, the carbs down a little bit more to 50 to 100 grams of carbs a day. At that point, you burn up the carbs pretty quickly, your body starts saying, I need more energy, so it starts burning off your fat. When you burn off the fat, it creates ketones. Ketones are another fuel source that your brain and your muscles can use for energy. What we call accelerated or more advanced weight loss is when you get less than 50 grams of carbs a day. This is more advanced, you want to kind of slide yourself down slowly into this. Don't go right there or it's going to be tough. You're going to be craving and headaches. But once you get less than 50, that becomes what we call ketogenic. It means that your body is starting to burn ketones as its fuel source. When you burn ketones as a fuel source, you're melting fat away. So those that have chronic disease risks, diabetes, more weight to lose, getting less than 50 can actually help you break that plateau and really get it down. But when you do that, you do have to increase the good fats again. The next thing to talk about is fat. Again, you want to talk about the good fats and the bad fats. Remember the bad fats. Bad fats are your trans fats. Bad fats are your vegetable oils. So read labels. If there's vegetable oil in there, canola oil, all those things, those are the bad inflammatory omega-6s that lead to chronic inflammation and disease. Good fats, again, anti-inflammatory fats are your omega-3s. Good for the brain, good for the heart, good for circulation. Very important. Next is protein. Let's talk a little bit more about protein. You know, there's all the protein shakes, a lot of protein advertising, protein bars. You can get too much protein. One problem with protein, for example, is that protein, just like carbs, spikes your insulin. Fat doesn't spike insulin. Kind of interesting. The amount of protein you want is really not as much as I think. It's only 75 grams a day. Okay, well, how much is that? Well, one chicken breast has about 20 to 25 grams of protein in a single chicken breast. It doesn't take a lot to get to 75 grams. The elderly, they need a little bit more you know, protein in their diet. But again, if you have kidney problems, you don't want to do too much protein because that can tax the, tax the kidneys a little bit. The second population that you want to look at are those that are losing weight. People that are losing weight don't want to lose muscle and fat. They want to lose just the fat and maintain the lean muscle. So you might need just a little bit more protein. And also when you're trying to lose weight, you're often exercising. So people that exercise or athletes also need a little bit more protein to build up those muscles after you break them down. The last one that's really important are your pregnant moms. They're eating for two, so you want to have a little more protein. Let's talk now about exercise. Exercise is really critical to weight loss, and it's also really important for maintaining weight loss. Now, low-intensity cardio is great for sensitizing insulin, going for a long two or three mile walk. Also, resistance training is important. So we're talking about like push-ups, large muscle groups, you know, grabbing some weights and doing some squats while you're watching TV, while you're watching the Dr. B show, right? That you can do and do two things at once. So large muscle increases the hormones like testosterone and growth hormone. Those hormones actually sculpt and lean the body. We want those where they're at. 
And the next thing you want to do is make sure you're sleeping. When we sleep, we actually lose weight if you play your cards right. When you sleep eight hours, your body dumps again growth hormone, testosterone, that heal your body, create an ideal environment, avoid too much light at night because light wakes you up, get everything dark before you go to sleep. And then relaxation is super important. Learn how to de-stress. Learn how to take time for yourself. Create white space, meditate, pray. All super important to relax yourself. It decreases chronically elevated cortisol. High cortisol leads to weight gain as well. Another thing is water. People that are trying to lose weight, water is essential. A little trick you can do is drink a cup of water before you eat. Your stomach gets distended slightly full and it tells your brain, oh, I've already eaten. I don't need to eat anymore. So drink water prior to meals and then sip it throughout the rest of the day. That's very important. Average, you probably need about three to six liters a day, which is quite a bit of water. Um, unless you're exercising. If you're exercising, it's humid, you're sweating a lot, drink more water. Finally, hormone optimization, right? So hormones, if they're out of balance, for example, if you're a postmenopausal woman and you have a high estrogen but low progesterone, you're never going to lose weight. If you're fatigued, you can't think straight and your thyroid's off, you're never going to lose weight. So often if you're really having trouble, you've tried everything, you've taken our advice, you might want to see a functional medicine specialist that can check those things out and see where you're at. On that same note, gut health. We find that people that take probiotics lose weight better. So there's certain strains of bacteria that actually help you lose weight. So doing fermented foods like kombucha, um, uh, you can do sauerkraut, kimchi, all those things have good bacteria, which will help you lose more weight as well. The other thing with the good bacteria is you want to also give yourself some prebiotics. These are different types of fiber that are found in like leeks, vegetables, um, asparagus. Those are all good fibers that actually feed the good bacteria. If you're a smoker, you have to quit smoking. Smoking causes insulin resistance as well, and we need to lose weight. So weight loss supplements, I get this question all the time. What are your top weight loss supplements? Well, the top weight loss supplement is eating healthy and exercise. On top of that, there are some things you can do, though, that will sensitize your insulin so you don't have to crank up the insulin so high. Some things like that would be L-arginine, berberine, fiber. Fiber does a lot of good things, and fiber also decreases how fat you absorb, fast you absorb carbohydrates so you can not spike your insulin. Cinnamon, apple cider vinegar, uh, omega-3s, all those are going to sensitize your insulin. So the first thing you need to do is take action, and you need to start today. You can do this, but you have to start with baby steps. Whatever you do, you're heading in the right direction. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us here and also at the studio at home. I hope that today was your first step to restore you. Next week, join us. We're going to have an in-depth conversation on functional medicine as the new frontier of primary care. You know, I would love to help you on your journey. If you want more information, amazing recipes, and plans to get you back on track, go to joelbumgardnermd.com. Until then, let's all health ovate and create health care the way it should be. I'm Dr. B, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching Health Ovate with Dr. B. For more information about topics discussed in this episode, go to joelbaumgartnermd.com and join Reed Jude University for free. Thanks for watching.